Hi folks, how we doing? We're on an adventure. I've got Lewis with me today, he's the cameraman. And we were going to be going to the Northwest Highlands and to Torridon. But that has been scrapped because the forecast isn't looking too good. And we're heading to an area of Scotland. I've only been to a few times and I've gone up a couple of hills that I've never been up to before. So I'm looking forward to this one. The skies are blue, things are looking good, although the forecast is for it to be quite breezy. Uh, so anyway, join us in this adventure and we'll uh, report back later on and when we're a bit closer to our destination. Although we weren't heading to the Northwest Highlands in Torridon, we were travelling quite a distance, probably just as far, to be honest with you, as the crow flies. But I was taking this in a completely different direction. I'm more used to heading north up the A9 or west on the, the road to Crean Larrick. But today we were, we were heading south and before long we were off the motorway and onto the country roads with some hills in our sights. And the whole purpose of us heading down here was to bag some new hills that I hadn't been up before, so I was in unfamiliar territory. Even trying to find somewhere to park was proving a bit troublesome, but we eventually found ourselves at the start of the route and a suitable little bit at the side of the road to park the van so we could get ready for the hike up the new hill. How much space have I got that way? Right, that's us just arrived at our parking spot for the first hill on the road. As I said earlier on, we weren't um, heading to Torridon, but we've decided to come south. We're in the deep, deep far south and we've come to the Galloway Forest. And the first hill today is a hill I've not done. I'm bagging today and I'll come on to that a wee bit later. So, um, yeah, just really looking forward to it. Hopefully the weather's going to stay nice. It's sunny at the moment, it looks a bit breezy up there, but let's get cracked on and I'll report back once we're all... Set to go. Right, we right, just had our bite to eat. It's time is at quarter to twelve. And it took us about know, two and a half, three hours to get down here, so just settling ourselves down before uh, heading further up the hill. Let's try to find me, uh, me hat. I'm going to put my hat on, hopefully. And there's my gloves. There we go. So it's a wee bit of a road walk, maybe a kilometre, maybe less than that actually, from where we were parked. And it's a pretty flat top till this one, and it's a corbett that I've never done. And I'll come on to the, the bagging side of things in a minute, but I'm looking forward to it. Although I think it's going to be a bit squelchy, so we've got our, our gaiters with us today, so we'll be putting those on. Because it was raining a lot yesterday, so... Ah, let's see how we get on, I'll report back when we're on the hill. Right, shall we get ready to go? Right, let's yeah. go. Let's do it. Right. We go. Oh, so we've hardly come any distance. We came across our first issue. You can probably hear the water behind me, but it's torrential rain yesterday, and this wee burn, which I think is called the Charlotte Burn, you see down there, doesn't look too bad. But had I been by myself, I wouldn't have been as bothered. But yeah, my son hasn't got as long legs as me, so we came up stream a wee bit and just came across this stone here. But it's still quite a a wide stretch to get across and we've got to come back this way so we'll just have to be careful um, yeah much fun but anyway we're heading up here and see it's pretty boggy but yeah let's go let's hope this cloud doesn't come to anything <laughs> right let's go so boggy might be the understatement of the year the path was Probably one of the, the worst in terms of bogs that I'd been on. It had been heavy rain the day before and it is noted in all the guidebooks that it's a boggy ascent from this side. But we headed on and the other thing which was hindering our progress and was the wind. Not only was the, the path very boggy but the wind was fairly howling. There's not much shelter on these Galloway hills, they're kind of open or rolling hillsides. But anyway... Every now and again the sun was showing itself, so that was uh, brightening our mood a little bit. Oh. Right, we're going to stop here just for a wee bite deep. We're not completely out of the wind, as you can see it's pretty blowy today. There's a wee rise behind the camera, so even though it might seem blowy where I am at the moment, it's not half as bad as it is when we're up in the open hillside. And that's one of the things 
about these sort of hills and the, the Galloway Hills and the hills further south here. Up in the moorland, you don't get much shelter from cliff surge, steep sided slopes, that's for sure. And one of the reasons we came here was the uh, Torridon Hills. We we're going to go into the highlands and in up to the northwest, but the isobars on the chart were getting tighter and tighter and tighter the further north that you go. There's high pressure sort of over France and the south of England. So, although it's still blowy, it's not nearly as half as blowy as it would have been in the mountains of the northwest highlands. And they're higher as well, so it would have been. Pretty, uh, we'd have been in the cloud as well, we wouldn't have got a view, so that's uh, that's good. So, we'll have to do with the gales in the southern uplands, which aren't as bad, but still, I tell you, it's going to be blowy. We're probably about halfway, so uh, we'll get on a bit further and we'll report back once we uh, get further up the hill. Right. Battling the wind and the soggy conditions, we headed further up and after a little bit longer we were starting to get more expansive views and, more importantly, a view of the new Corbett that we were hoping to bag today. Well, we're getting there. The final pull up onto the summit plateau is behind us, so we've got one more pull to do. You see there's a wee lock in here. <laughs> and there's no stream out of it. And the water's just, I mean, it's just been one big bog the whole way up. It's been pretty wet, both our feet are soaking, so... Um, the views have been alright, it's nice view down to... There's a few sort of uh, locks splattered around the landscape. You know what, the tops are clear, the sun's coming out every now and again. So, uh, it's just this wind that's cutting through us, so... We'll get up here, get to the top, and we'll head back, so... Let's go. Almost there, we think. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, take my hood down now. So we've got a shower blue in there. It's quite heavy rain actually. So this is the trick point on Shalach of Minich. And the summit of this hill is, let me just check the height of where we are. Bear with me. This is 768. But the true summit, this isn't actually the true summit, the true summit's over there, it's about seven or eight metres higher, so I'm afraid, Lewis, we need to go a bit further. <laughs> right, we'll report back when we get to the top top. Let's go. Right, let's go. Ooh. Right, about 200 metres beyond the trig point is the true summit of the hill. We're getting views now down to the other hills in the range of the awful hand. Well, here we are. Well done, Lewis. This is a, not quite as impressive as the the, the, the trick point in the stone circle over there, is it? The pile of stones. Anyway, it's actually quite a nice viewpoint. Although it's cloudy at the moment, to the uh, to the south of us is the rest of the the Galloway Hills and hills like the Merrick and I can't remember <laughs> the names of the other ones. Cairnsmore of Fleet, I think, and Carnes Fern of uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so. Bagging, I mean, this is a hill that I haven't stood on before. This is my third, I think this is my third last Corbett on the mainland. Got a few to do in the islands, but I don't really, I don't really go out to bag now as much as I used to. I mean, I, I used to I refuse to go up a hill with somebody unless it was a hill that I'd not done. <laughs> I was that obsessed by it. And as I've grown older, that probably was lasted for, I don't know, five, ten years when I first got into it. But now I, I'm usually just happy to get out and about. Yeah, the sun is shining now. It's good. The wind's still blowing. I don't know if it can, the microphone's picking up. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just glad that I come out. But there is advantages to, to being a bagger. It brings you to areas you wouldn't normally go to. I mean, I'm not sure if I'll come back up this hill because it was so blooming boggy. It was a bog fest. But you know what? Now that I'm on the top, I've got a great view. And I would never have come here had it not been a hill that I had to sort of tick off. So it has its advantages and disadvantages. And as the years have gone on, the, the, the hills that I had left to bag got further and further away and more and more difficult to uh, to get to. And that's the reason it, it kind of slows you down. You start off and you get through all these Monroes that are not far from the central belt or wherever you may live. And then you get further and further away and get more and more difficult to get to. But today, this has been a perfect opportunity 
to come down to these two. I had planned to do this one and the, the other one we're going to be doing tomorrow is the Merrick. I had planned to do them on a wild camping trip, but um, this opportunity arose and I'm glad that I've, I'm here with my son. He's, he's uh, made it to the top as well, so we're, we're having a good time. We're going to go back to the van and uh, it looks like there's another shower rolling in, so although it's sunny at the moment, I think uh, we're going to have to batten down the hatches in a minute, so we're going to shut up. And let's get down off the hill. We've still got that blooming burn to cross, so... Yep, you ready to go? Let's go. <laughs> Just come over to the wee shelter circle next to the, uh, the trick point there to get uh, a wee bite to eat out of the wind. I was saying that it started to rain, hence why you can see me with this big hood on. It's quite a nice big, the hood's massive, but it comes quite... Quite far out, I don't know if you can see that. So it protects you from side gusts, which is uh, relatively good. Anyway, you might not be able to hear this because I've not got my microphone on. It does look pretty grey and damp. In fact, the rain is on. <laughs> so I might not do too many more bits to camera until we get back down to the van. Oof, miserable. The weather was chopping and changing as we headed back down, but one thing that was constant was the sogginess of the ground. Boggy, boggy, boggy. Right, we're back on the uh, the wee road section. We're not far from the the van. It's literally just there. I don't know if you can see us, but that was probably the boggiest <laughs> bog fest I've had in a long time. And I think it was just that the path remained boggy for so long, all the way up. It was really wet. I know it was uh, yesterday was a wet day, but that was um, exceptionally boggy. So anyway, glad to be back at the van. Report back in a wee while and we'll decide on what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day and whether we'll, we'll park up here or whether we'll find somewhere else to, to park up. So let's go and get a cup of tea on. Right, so... Ooh, we're back at the van. We've had a wee bite to eat, dried off, changed our socks and <laughs> our boots. And we're going to go and try and find a park up. Uh, closer to the hill that we've got planned tomorrow, so yeah, let's um, let's move on to uh, see if we can find somewhere to park up. And what we'll do is I'll report back to you when we get to that um, that spot and we're settled in. Let's go. The hill the following day wasn't too far away as the crow flies, but this single track road must have taken us a good 40 minutes, 45 minutes to get down it, and I was glad when we reached the end point and the car park. Oh. Ah, right, we have arrived. I'll tell you what, that was one windy single track road, and the place we've come to it feels, although the, the hill that we've just been up, um, Shalach on Minich. Shalach on Minich, was that right? Anyway, it was very rolling bogey, but we've literally come maybe 10 miles further south for our hill tomorrow, and it immediately it feels different. It feels very much like the Trossachs. If I was to land here right now, and somebody was to ask me where I was in Scotland, I'd say I was in the uh, Trossachs, round about Benvenue and Ben Anne, these sort of places. So, anyway, we've got a lovely spot, probably the closest car parking spot to the start of the trail for tomorrow and the the hike. And there's a wee uh, there's a wee monument down here, which I'll take you to later on. But for now, I'm going to get the um, the camper all set up and roof up and get settled in, and then I'll take you down to this wee interesting uh, historical plaque and explain all about it in a wee while, but for now I think we get the roof up and sorted for the evening Right, let's take you down and show you this wee memorial Well, look at this view Hopefully you can see why I thought it was a bit like the, uh, the Trossachs, I think that looks so like Benvenue from certain positions. Anyway, there's some wee placards here which are giving the, uh, the game away. But I'll take you down to the memorial. These placards tell of the, the battle that happened here and it involved Robert the Bruce. Wow. This is the, uh, the memorial to Robert the Bruce. And below me is Loch Trull. And I'm only 
recalling, recalling, recounting what's said in the, uh, the wee notice board up there which uh, recounts the history. I didn't know actually anything about this, I think I maybe watched it in the telly once, but the Bruce was defeated at Perth, or just west of Perth at Medvin, the Battle of Med Medvin. If, if you've seen the film, there's a cracking battle sequence in the, <laughs> in the recent film about the Bruce. Anyway, um, it was the Earl of Pembroke who had come up, and apparently it was unchivalrous activity uh, that led to that heavy defeat for the Bruce, and he fled. And only, there was only about 300 of them left, the rest of them were all slaughtered and all that gruesome stuff. So they, they actually fled to these hills, apparently, the Galloway Hills and they lured that Pembroke came after them, this Earl of Pembroke who was under the command of Edward I and apparently the Bruce lured them into this valley, into this glen and on the south side of Loch Trill where it's steep sided there's a small, there was a small track and the 300 men uh, were waiting for this, I think they said it was about 1500 heavily, heavily armed cavalry and what they did was, it was guerrilla tactics and they rolled big boulders and stones down from high above and set about them <laughs> and uh, defeated them. It's quite a famous victory apparently here. So this is what com commemorates the, um, yeah, com com commemorates that, uh, that battle. It just says, in loyal remembrance of Robert the Bruce, King of Scots, whose victory in this glen over an English force in March 1307 opened the campaign of independence, which he brought to a decisive close at Bannockburn on the 24th of June 1314. What a, yeah, pretty impressive stone. It's well worth coming to visit this. A bit of history as always. It's not. It's always gruesome history as well. So, anyway, I'm going over here to enjoy the, the views of the loch. There you go. That's that's what uh, I was coming up to show you. So, yeah, probably better googling it and finding out more. It's um, it's intriguing stuff. So. Right, well, as you can see, it's uh, it's night time. It's a wee bit of rain. We've had a few wee donders down to the the stone, the Bruce Stone, and uh, I took a few pictures, played about. Uh, yeah, came out all right. There wasn't many stars in the sky, unfortunately. There's a full moon as well, so the uh, the starry skies weren't around. Anyway, it's been a bit of an adventure today. As I said, probably one of the boggiest. <laughs> paths that I've been on for a long time and that was mainly to do with well one it's it's boggy anyway but there was a lot of rain yesterday which didn't contribute and the other thing that I discussed a wee bit during this video was bagging to bag or not to bag I mean I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for bagging I as I said before when I started it was Monroe's and it was new Monroe's I would not do anything but new Monroe's and then I was on to the Corbett's but and without doing that, I don't think I'd be where I am today. It really had a drive for me. But as I've grown older and the holes have got further away, and yeah, I don't see the the need. I just like getting out. I feel I feel fine. I mean, I don't have that many corbets to do. I've got about two days left to finish them in rows, and that's been the same for about ten years. <laughs> ten years. Um, I've got two more. Corbett's to do in the mainland, I've got a few in the islands, so I think I'll get around to it, I think I will, because I do, I do sometimes think, oh maybe I should, maybe I should just finish them off, but um, yeah, I think it's a good thing, I think it's a good thing to, to do it, I think it gives people a drive to get out and about in all weathers and not just kind of, it's too easy to procrastinate and sit at home sometimes and if you've got a list to get through, I think it gives you that drive, I've been out in all sorts <laughs> in the past, but anyway, I'm going to shut up now, I'm going to, um, we're going to hit the hay, and tomorrow, or probably for you guys on next week's video, we're going to go up the highest mountain uh, or hill in the southern uplands and we're both looking forward to it and just hoping that that path isn't going to be as boggy as it was today. So, as always, stay safe out there and I'll see you next week for this adventure which we're doing tomorrow. Night-night. <laughs>